Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about a preview of calculus. So one of the first questions I like to ask anyone who takes calculus is what comes to mind when you hear the word calculus? You might have had friends take calculus in the past. They may have said the class is challenging, difficult. Well, it's not really the calculus that's the difficult part. It's the algebra that's underlying the calculus concepts that's difficult. So here's a definition that I received when I took calculus. Calculus is the mathematics of change. Now, when I took calculus, I didn't understand what that really meant. Not until I went through the concepts of calculus did I truly understand what it means that math can change. So when you learned about slope of a line back in algebra class, the slope of a line does not change when you pick two points on the line. Well, when you talk about the slope of a curve, though, depends on what part of the curve you're at, you might have a different slope. So when we talk about slope of a curve, that's where we'll introduce calculus concepts. Or if you're talking about a speed of an object, well, it depends on how fast the object is accelerating or moving, you might have different speeds at different moments in time. So here's some examples of where calculus comes in in real applications. When you talk about an object, velocity, acceleration, or speed, those can all change. The slope of a curve at a point, so it depends on what point on the curve you're at, you might have a different slope. We're gonna talk about how do you find the area under a curve. If you have a nice geometric shape like a circle, there's formulas to find its area, or a rectangle or a triangle or a trapezoid, but how do you find the area under a curve when the curve's more general? Related rates, marginal analysis of cost, revenue, and profit coming from business and economics, elasticity of demand for a product, that's from economics, and how do you have other concepts coming from physical sciences, chemistry and biology that use calculus. Those are all gonna be discussed in this class. So here's an outline of the course, how we're gonna go through the concepts of calculus. So we've already encountered college algebra math. So in college algebra, whether you took college algebra at LCC, Math 120, or you took college algebra at Michigan State or any other university, college algebra is essentially the study of functions. You have linear functions, quadratic functions, polynomial functions, exponential functions, logarithms, and then you also have rational functions. Those are all discussed in college algebra. Well, you talk about the graphs, you talk about the behaviors of the function, some properties that they have, like a slope of a line, um, a parabola for quadratic functions, whether it opens up or down, whether you have asymptotes for rational functions and logarithm functions, and so forth. All those topics that you talk about in college algebra, we're going to apply calculus to them, calculus concepts. So in this class, we're going to start with chapter one, where we talk about limits and the limit process. We're going to find out that limits are the basis for the two main ideas or concepts in calculus. So when we get to chapters two, three, and four, we'll actually use the calculus concepts. And these are what's called derivatives. We'll encounter those in chapters two and three. And then antiderivatives and integrals we'll encounter in chapter four. So calculus comes down to two main problems. So one problem is called the tangent line problem. So when we talk about the slope of a curve, it's really talking about tangent lines. So let's say you have an x-axis and a y-axis and you have some general curve. So this is any function's graph. It looks like it's decreasing as you go to the left and it's increasing as you go to the right and it has a, a hill and it has a valley. Well, if you talk about a line, the slope doesn't change. You can pick any two points on a line find its slope using the slope formula, and the slope will never change no matter what two points you pick on the line. Well, so when I have a point on this curve, the slope will change. If I'm at the very top of this hill, it looks like I'm not really changing that much. I'm increasing on the left side, but then I'm decreasing on the right side. So what's the slope? It looks like it's gonna be a very small slope. This graph is sloped pretty steadily from left to right as I'm going down. And then it hits a, a very bottom of the valley or the bottom of this hill, and it doesn't look like you change at all. But then you increase after that pretty quickly. So if I choose a point P in some x coordinate, y coordinate on this curve, we're going to find out how do you find the slope of the, of the curve? You draw a tangent line. So a tangent line is a line that just touches the graph in that one point. So it looks like this tangent line is falling from left to right. And how do you find the slope of the curve? You find the slope of this tangent line, a concept that we know from college algebra how to do. You find any two points on this tangent line and you find the slope. Or we're gonna find out how to do this in calculus where you just have one point. If you have one point and you use the concept of derivatives, 
you can actually find out what is the slope of this tangent line using just one point. So when you hear the word tangent line to the graph at a point, or if you hear the slope of a curve at a point, these are all related to what's called derivatives. And this is one main concept in calculus. We're going to encounter those in chapters two and three. Now, the other problem that we'll encounter in calculus comes in when we're talking about area under a curve or area bounded by a curve. We can find the area of nice geometric shapes, rectangles, triangles, trapezoids, circles, but we can't really find the, the area using any geometric formula of the area under a curve. So let's say we have another curve. This time we'll be decreasing and then we'll increase a slight bit and then we'll de decrease. We want to find out what's the area between this x value, I'm going to call it x equals a, so that's where the area will start. So notice that this x equals a forms a boundary for the area. All the area is above the x-axis and it's below this curve. And then I'm going to stop the area at this other x value at x equals b. How do you find the area of this shape? It's not a nice geometric shape. We're going to have to use calculus concepts to find out its area. And so this is what's called area of a region under a curve between x equals a and x equals b. So you're above the x-axis, you're below the curve, so that's why it's area under the curve, and you start at x equals a and end at x equals b. To use calculus to, to find out this area, we'll need integrals and antiderivatives, and this will all be in chapter four. So in calculus, there really are only these two problems, the tangent line problem and the area under a curve. In college algebra, you talk about all those variety of functions. In calculus, you apply this tangent line problem to each of those types of functions from college algebra. So linear functions, quadratic functions, how do you find the, the slope of a curve of a parabola? How do you find the slope of a curve of a polynomial function or a log function or a rational function? Those will all be talked about in this class and the applications that arise from them. And then from geometry, how do you find the area under a curve using calculus, using each of these functions from college algebra? And so before we get to the tangent line problem and the area under a curve, we need the basic concept of what's called a limit. Limits make both of these problems possible using calculus concepts. So this is a good point to stop our first video on a preview of calculus. In the next video, we'll talk about this limit process and what are limits.